Good afternoon and welcome everyone to In Brief. Today's In Brief is about implementing ILPs into your organization. And with me I have two distinguished guests. Uh, we have Claire Holden from Loughborough College and we also have Mick Gilroy from Aspire Lincoln College. And what these two wonderful people will be doing is explaining their journey in implementing ILPs into their organization. So what we're going to cover today is we will be doing a quick review of Ofsted reports in 2013, what are the key recommendations that will be coming out with, and then we'll be going to Claire to talk about ILPs at Loughborough College, and then Mick will be talking about what has been happening at Aspire Lincoln College. So review of Ofsted reports. Over the summer, the RC East Midlands has been doing a review of all the Ofsted reports for 2013 in the East Midlands region. And our in-depth scientific methods were get all the recommendations and stick them in Wordly to see what the key findings are. And it's nice to see that some of the larger words there are things like learners and learning. But if you do start to look a little bit more into it, what you can find are kind of scary words like data, achieve, improve, support, uh, and the many more that kind of lend themselves towards ILPs. On top of that, one thing that we also did was we, we did a, a greater in-depth analysis as to what the recommendations were. I mean, we put them into key themes. And here's some of the comments made that we have aligned to ILPs and tracking. So things like, don't always record progress and achievements, tracking systems not robust enough, does not capture progress, doesn't monitor weak target setting. And all those are elements that a good ILP uh, uh, system should be able to capture. So what we've got is, uh, as I say, Claire and Mick will be able to be discussing their journey in implementing ILPs. First of all, what I'd like you to do is, would it be possible for you to just use a voting button? Uh, it's on the left-hand side in the participants box. You should see a little A. If you click on that, and could you just identify what kind of uh, follow, which of the following statements best describes you and your organization? I'll give you uh, just over a minute. Thank you. Claire, if you'd just like to. Thank you very much. Oh. Thank you very much, Steve. Right, I'd like to talk to about really and describe our three, I, I say it's probably a three year journey into our development and implementation of our ILP. Um, probably just about, just over three years ago, we decided that we needed to replace our internal um, homemade ILP, which was basically a database with some more functionality and move on to something that could be shared, and I think this is the most important part of the aspect, is to be shared by students as well as staff. So it would be something that would be accessed by students as well as staff as we went along. This is probably a very, very important part of having an ILP so, so um, um, during the last exactly three years, year, we, we implemented the ILP, 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 we looked at the system, we looked at the number of board and the visitors of the colleges, and we came across and decided to go for the Pro Monitor, which is the Compass product. This was for a number of reasons, but one of the bigger reasons was because we already had Compass Pro Solution, 
and go and achieve. So, uh, so uh, we like the functionality of it, we like the way that the systems work together, and we felt that this would be the best way for us to go forward. So during that first summer, summer as I was out of time, I was going to be taking forward. It was really important that we um, set, set up, up our first year project, project plan. plan. So, so as, as a user group, group, group so we had, had individuals, individuals from across different areas, areas, and we, and we under some training. training. So very, very much short, sharp, half-hour training sessions that were rolled out during that first three or four weeks of um, using the ILP, and really tried to get some fairly quick wins in. So that's changing people's hearts and minds across the curriculum, showing them that this is a really good way to go forward and document the students' progress. And um, also work with some, if you like, people within the curriculum who would be prepared to have a look and develop further functions, because I think you've got to start rolling out two functions and then look at developing other functions as you go along. So we did that. We also had fairly new stuff in the curriculum called learning coaches, which work with curriculum staff, but are very much undertaking the tutorials, the support, the early interventions with students. And that's kind of gone along with the development of the ILP as a role, because it's, it's a role that really, really uses the ILP. So that was really useful. The other area that we used that was an early adopter of the ILP usage was learning support stuff, because the ILP and ProMonitor very much recognises where students need support, their support plans, and making sure those support plans are implemented but also visible to staff, not to students for these, but obviously to other staff. So it was a means of sharing the support plans in place. So looking further on over that first year, as I mentioned earlier, it was about making sure training events were, were put on for all staff. And we very much kept a record of who attended the, rec the, the event, so that we were able to feed that back into staff development to look at which teams were then adopting parts of the ILP. Through the um, focus groups and the, the, the curriculum groups, we were able then to take forward new functions. And the two or three that we took on very early on, which was uh, student progress reports. So we, know, we knew some teams, and we took that forward with the sixth form team making sure that they got progress reports which were set up and as they worked through with us on that we developed and uh, refined and improved the way the documents came out. Administration would print them and send them off. Then we realised quite quickly actually they could be published online as PDF so students were able to access them that way. As I mentioned earlier, student support became a really big feature of the way we used the ProMonitor ILP so that, that continued to work, review dates, uh, assessment reports were in there. The main area that we used was the, was the comments section, and really in that first year it was a bit of a free for all. There's a comment section in the ProMonitor ILP that allows teaching staff, support staff, anybody really, to put in a comment about a student that could be either visible to the student or not visible to the student. And we found a lot of people putting lots of comments in, so it was a way of people being not afraid to add comments in about students. And the way that I used to sell it to people was that this whole comments uh, e information would kind of present the whole student's journey, you know, the information about the student, including their support needs, any issues that people needed to be aware of, communications with parents, possibly students behaving badly around the campus, all those sorts of things would be put into the comments section. The third thing that we looked at with a couple of teams who were early adopters was up setting up the mark book. Now the mark book is a separate section which tracks academic progress. So that requires us to put the um, scheme of work into the system and then allows the teachers to mark and put marks in and where students have marked. And we did it for six form for kind of summative assessment for homework, but where it held most strength actually was the BTEC students because we were able to put in the unit specifications and then students and staff could see how students were progressing by putting merits, distinctions, passes, you know, and, and logging it through. Then with our learning coaches, we started to look at the way we were using meetings with students because that's another area where students having tutorials with staff both teaching staff and learning coaches, we could actually log, monitor, and record the, the tutorials. And uh, that was a really successful part of what we did. So we've refined that over the last year. And I'll show you some examples of those in a moment. And then the last one was the um, 
ensuring that students uh, were also putting their own information in, so their own goals, their own targets, so that really students were being asked to make sure that they were actually recording and reflecting on their own goals and targets and logging those into the ILP, so there was that shared ownership approach. So that really took us through to the end of the first year. And then as we reviewed it, we went through to the summer. Uh, uh, but just to let you have a look at some of the screenshots we've got here, this is, a, this is one, these, these are fake students, so you can see we've got sort of the photographs there. The yellow band around the photograph denotes a learning support need, but I think what we're also finding is because the ILP was very much linked into our MIS system, it was very quick and easy to look at student details. This is the first page really, so it shows you very clearly the student's name, address, personal details, the course that they're on. Um, and, and that sort of information which is very helpful for teaching staff and also support staff we found that support staff around the college were starting to use the ILP as a means of looking at students' details and, and uh, knowing what course they were on and who they were. And I know for example my learning resources staff and library staff found this quite, uh, quite valuable in looking at students' their details. Yes, thank you Claire. Um, Kevin Brace has just asked uh, whether this is the red, amber, green process. It most certainly is. Uh, we have been very much adopting the red, amber, green process. And in a moment, I'll show you where we've been using the new badges, which are indicators of attendance. So attendance over 90%, 95%, sorry, is green, amber between 90 and 95, red below. So the risk indicators have become very important to us just over this last few months as we bought that extra module. And I'll show you an example of that in a minute. Right, and this is uh, the meeting. So one of the things we've done, and I know we looked at it with other colleges and saw this good, good practice on it, that it was outside colleges and other colleges, but the meetings, the progress review meetings with the learning coaches, um, we've set them up, and the good practice is that this, every student should have what we call a wobble, wobble week review, which means are you on the right course, are you wobbling on your course during your second or third week. So that's good practice, that's about recording where students are and making sure that somebody sits down with every single student fairly early on in their course just to make sure that they're keeping on track academically, they're keeping on track attendance wise and there's no poor behaviour going on and those sorts of things are logged there. Okay, so now it's the second year, um, as I mentioned we got through to the end of the year, we felt we'd made some improvements very much in that first year and into the second year about making sure we were meeting with all the curriculum areas to do action planning. So looking now at what sort of smart targets were on the students' ILPs, we developed an induction checklist so that students coming in in the second year would have a checklist that they would go through that they could tick off. Further development of Markbook and actually making sure it was implemented across more, certainly starting with full-time FE student areas and the sixth form, so again rolling that out and making sure more and more students have got that access. Comment types, we then started to refine because it's all very well having lots of different comments but sometimes you need to put them into different types, so I'll show you a screenshot of that. Yes, Claire, can I just ask uh, the team behind this, uh, who is involved in, in uh, first of all developing the, the yearly plan and then also implementing it? Okay, uh, very good question actually. We've been very lucky in college in, in that from one point we've got an ILP um, technical support person which has been an absolute godsend for us because what we've had to do is have somebody who's got good admin skills but also good technical skills to actually take forward some of these developments because actually we're finding that it's almost one person's full-time job to do that. Um, the people who decide on this are often learning coaches, so they're people across the curriculum teams, particularly the FE curriculum team, but we'll also have some curriculum staff as well from as a user group, so there'll be people who are also interested. So we do try and make sure we've got people from, who are representative from all across the curriculum areas in the focus group. As we went into our third year, we've actually sat down and gone through almost line by line what we're using, what we're not using, and continue to refine that and develop that further. Okay, so now if we go into some examples, I'll show you. This is our induction checklist, and this is this year's, but we developed it last year. So very much around ensuring that students who are, again, they're full-time FE 
16 to 18 year olds in general and we've got an induction checklist there that we would hope that students would be able to work through during that induction first three or four weeks and have important information that they will be doing either in tutorials or that they will be uh, signposted to during their induction sessions. Some of those are documents. We are working on making some of them more interactive activities and some of them are little video clips that they'll be able to watch. So we've put out our health and safety. This next one shows you the smart targets and the types that we've developed. So as you can see this year, we've actually put our disciplinary system entirely into our smart targets and, and comments area and into the ILP, which is something that we had separate up until this year. Um, so we've got different comment types now and again you can see they're RAG rated so we've got attendance, uh, behaviour, um, careers and employability. We started to bring other people into using the ILP around the college. Then we've got the red behaviour which are the causes for concerns which can be escalated up into higher levels of disciplinary personal targets and then the support which is the yellow which is just that we really need to make sure that our support staff are putting targets in for students to, to reach. So it's about hopefully having a shared resource that all sorts of staff are using and students are also using it. The other thing is that we're really keen to make sure that students are also giving themselves smart targets. So it's not just staff to student, it's students also owning it and giving themselves smart targets and then going in and, and um, completing them. Okay, the next one is the mark book. So here again you can see an example that I've, I've lifted from a, an ILP of a, a BTEC course. This is, uh, I think it's a media course. It's got the units in there. So staff will be able to go through that and as students complete those units they can tick them off and put their marks in and put some feedback in as well. So we did find towards the end of that first year when we implemented this that students were really taking ownership of this and I've had students, I, I, I guess it's about managing the expectation, students will be saying well I put my mark in yesterday and nobody's marked it for me yet and put it on my ILP, I need to know that I've passed this assignment. So it's about managing that and actually having a fairly clear process that students submit their work and then they expect to have their marks back within a fortnight so it's managing that. But what we can see is towards certainly this last year, which was the sort of the end of the full second year, by about April, May, students were seeing it, staff were seeing it, and they were really seeing the whole benefits of this, rather than having these sort of spreadsheet tracking sheets in their own drives, actually having it here where students could see as well as uh, staff, there was a real shared ownership of the whole process. Yeah, so could I just ask how students got access to this uh, ILP database? It's all on their ILP, so the, the, there's kind of two versions of it, but it's actually the same view almost. Uh, the one I'm showing you at the moment is the staff view. As students log on, they see a really similar menu. So it's a different web address. They log in with their own username and password through their own e-learning platform. And then they can see very much similar information that you can see down the menu. So certainly those top few menu items students will be able to see all of those including their mark book, their goals, there are sections that we really expect students to be putting in like their destinations, their long-term goals, their employability goals. The areas where we don't let students look at is the support section so students can't see any of that third area there with the support needs and then staff can decide whether students see the comments or not so there's a little quite a clear tick box in there say visible to students so students can either see it or not see their comments dependent on whether the staff has ticked that to be visible. Okay so now we come into the third year and we're really just on this now because this is, this is our third summer and where we feel we are on now and moving forward over this next year is we're very much refining and developing that functionality into the ILP. So the areas that I've shown you, the development of the disciplinary system completely in the ILP which brings all the student behaviour and uh, attendance and ensuring that we can do the at risk well. The other areas that we've, we've been developing this last few months is the we've got reports packaged from Compass so we've developed that and I'll show you a screenshot of the sorts of reports that we're now able to record out of that and then also something I mentioned a moment ago the at risk badges those coloured indicators which have been really really 
valuable for teaching stuff and other stuff to see on students' ILPs. as a quick view, really. Um, the other thing that I did over the summer was I wrote an ILP policy, which is very much that goes on, on public, so what students expect to see in their ILPs, what staff expect to, see, to have to put in their ILPs, so that, that whole shared approach. And then the procedures are really about making sure that, the, that every section of the ILP is, is almost a statement of what's expected, so managing the expectations, because that then will be checked at our quality review, our quarterly quality review. So for example, every student should have a wobble week if they're a 16 to 19 year old student. Every student should have at least five smart targets in their ILP during their first term. Every student should have a progress review with a parent's evening. Every student should, should have their goals, their long-term goals in there. So it's really making sure that we've got some, some expectations and uh, an auditable information in there, which then we can go back and, and review. OK, so this shows you the uh, enrolment details and just some further details from the uh, indicators that I mentioned earlier. So here we've got three lots of badges that we're putting onto the student ILPs this year. You can see the yellow border, which indicates that this young man has got support. Um, he really is a young man, although he's, uh, <laughs> his name appears to be a lady's name. Uh, it's between an anomaly of uh, creating fake accounts. Um, but what we've got here is some badges that we've reduced, introduced this year. The M means medical, so any student who has a medical need is being flagged. Obviously these are seen by staff but not on the students ILPs at all. So people have to be sensitive when they're doing registers that they don't bring them up on the smart board at the front of the class because students would see that. So that young person's got a medical information. They will have uh, indicated that at enrolment, and then our support staff will put that into information into their ILP. So for example, if the student is epileptic and may be subjected to, to epileptic fits, then that's recorded. If they just need an inhaler, then they don't need any support, then we can also put that. But it's just making sure we've got all that information. The A there would demonstrate to me that this student has got a very bad attendance record. We've rag indicated the attendance. It's automatically coming out of ProSol. I think that's another really good thing about this. We don't have to do anything manually to this. Students' rag indicators will change colour according to their attendance reports on the uh, Pro Solution. So this person here has got an attendance record at the moment of below 90%. And then the third indicator is if he has had uh, behaviour, i.e. disciplinary intervention at stage one, two and three and above one, it will be indicated there at, at amber and red. So all those things would indicate a student as at risk. And I think that's where we're starting to move towards now in terms of identifying those students quickly. Now, the last shot I have is the... Um, the report package, which we've been able to implement, and this really helps us with that auditing process. So my ILP administrator has been working here on, we've just done reports recently for students who have achieved their induction checklist, how many, what areas, and how many of the tech checklists have they done, how many smart targets and whether they're overdue, how many risk indicators, so students who are at risk if they've got poor attendance has also been logged and monitored, and uh, there's another one as well, uh, and the Wobble Week review. So every student should have had a Wobble Week review or will have one. So again, drilling it down right down into areas so that we can actually see where we've got students, well, actually it's where we've got curriculum teams who are not keeping up with the audit and that will be picked up. So it's quite easy to run those reports and it's a very quick one. The other area that we've run these reports, which has been very interesting and useful, is that we can do it individually for students. So, for example, two things that we did over this last year was run a progress a progress application out of the ILP, which logs every student who progresses from one year up to the next, and then goes through and gets enrolled on the next year, which is a really good way of ensuring that we're doing our, getting our progression rates, uh, doing it well and also monitoring it in the right place. And we've literally, just in the last couple of weeks, indicated a withdrawal, which is going to be very interesting. So we have an approach uh, at college where we call it, we're calling it in early interventions, but it's actually about those students who have to be withdrawn within those first six weeks. If you, if you were well aware, I'm sure many of you are, those first six weeks at college are really crucial time. And whether we need to withdraw anybody because 
the behaviour has been so poor or the attendance or possibly their academic progress is not doing so well so maybe it's about transferring them onto a lower level course or, or something else more appropriate to their needs but it's about tracking and monitoring that all that and if you can do that all through one place which we're starting to find I think it's about bringing all the functionality together to record to all as, as we said our vision in the first place it's about recording the whole student journey in one place so if you were somebody coming in to look I would be able to see what happened to the student over the year were they disciplined did they have any issues with support you know medical issues I'll be able to see all of those things okay thank you very much Claire uh, that is a definitely a fascinating journey Claire will be in the room uh, for the next 20 minutes so if you uh, want to ask any further questions and please feel free to add them into the text chat Claire will respond but moving on uh, who we have now is Mick Gilroy from Aspire Lincoln College as it's now called and uh, what Mick is going to talk about is an alternative solution for ILPs especially in the work-based learning sector so thank you Mick Hi, um, my presentation is going to be about the de development and use of ILPs and how we've moved from a predominantly paper-based system to a 100% electronic system now um, in a work-based learning environment all the the delivery, the learning assessment is done in the workplace, so the needs of the ILPs are completely different to those in a college where the learning tends to be classroom based. So all these things had to be taken into consideration when we delivered our ILP. Just want to tell you a little bit about Aspire. Aspire is the work-based learning department of Lincoln College. Okay, we they completed a merger with ISIS Training, which was an independent training provider in Lincoln in June 2013, and we were able to bring all the various expertise together from the two companies to create the version of the ILP that we're using now. I was formerly the manager, the e-learning manager of ISIS training. I'm now an ICT instructor with responsibility for e-learning within Aspire. So the brief history of ILPs. In a work-based learning organization, they're traditionally paper-based and this is mainly due to sort of a rather old-fashioned view that every single piece of paper must have a signature that signature must be in ink and it must be dated now of course when you're in a work-based learning environment various people want a copy of this ILP the learner needs a copy, the employer needs a copy, the assessor needs a copy, the admin team needs a copy so we're forever duplicating these documents and taking them out for yet another person to sign them there was probably about six or seven different versions of each individual ILP all in various filing cabinets around the center and to be honest that system is frustrating time consuming and, and from my point of view quite annoying when we realized we could move over to electronic version was for the introduction of eight portfolios they created the perfect opportunity for ILPs mainly because a lot of the information is stored in the eight portfolio all the details about the qualifications the learners progress the learning aims everything like that okay so the the process of creating an electronic ILP became quite simple now again it depends on the a portfolio system we, you are using we would used several different versions in ISIS training before we settled on a version called OneFile which absolutely met our needs and was the perfect platform to develop an electronic ILP okay. it got to the stage where all the info information in the ILPs was being duplicated in paper and electronic format so to all intents and purposes you have two versions of it you have the paper based versions which once they were signed and stored and put in the final cabinet tended to just sit there not serving any useful purpose and then you have the electronic format and the information on the e-portfolio system that could be literally accessed anytime anyone required to access it one of the good things about the one file e-portfolio system and one of the reasons why we chose that is because all the forms can be created within the system and automatically linked to the information already in there to create a full ILP and the object as Claire mentioned earlier on is to create an ILP that records the learner journey from the day they sign up to the day they complete their qualification and all the incidents and, and happenings in between and that's exactly what we've managed to achieve I'm just going to show a few screenshots now about how things were and how we changed and how we moved along okay? 
The first one is the typical paper-based forms that people would fill in. Okay, and you've probably all seen these type of things before. You probably all had experience in them. The registration form with all the details of the learners. Then another form that has the details of the qualification and the elements and the dates and things like that. And that was literally just the first two pages. In our paper-based version, there was probably about another 10 or 12 versions of pages to fill in that have all to be done on the initial visit with the learner. The first stage of moving towards an electronic one was to create all this information and replicate it in an electronic format. And we did this using Excel of all things, because that just seemed to be the application that allowed you to format it and get the information down. Okay. So we didn't call this an ILP because this was only a small component of the ILP, but this was a skills and knowledge planner. And the first part of it shows the basic initial assessment, the learning details, sorry, and the basic initial assessments. The second part shows how the qualification is going to be delivered, things like um, workplace visits, reviews, assessment methods. Okay, and then the third part, just down the bottom of it, shows the framework elements, all the components that are going to make up that learner's qualification. And with the guided learning hours in there, which are really important these days, as I'm sure everyone appreciates, and the target dates to start each module and to complete each module, and also the date the learner was registered, was registered, and all that sort of fairly important information that you need to have. The next part of this, at the top part, was a way of recording the learner's progress. This was pre-e-portfolio days, okay, and what we did, we created this um, spreadsheet with all the elements of the qualification in there, with the unit credit values, okay, the start dates for each unit, the completion dates for each unit, and in red was the progress that the learner had made on each visit or after each assessment. And all we did, we just developed um, the relative formulas to calculate that automatically. So right at the bottom, you would see the amount of time the learner had spent on the program and the amount of the learning and the qualification that was completed. We realized that wasn't enough, and this came about as a result of an Ofsted inspection in 2011, where they went through our ILP, our data, and the, the feedback was that the data is excellent, the learning records are excellent, the progress and monitoring, the reviews are fine. But one thing that highlighted that we weren't doing clearly enough or detailed enough was the actual learning that was delivered. Okay, and I think a lot of people tend to make that mistake. And for all you know, you, you're, you are delivering the learning, and learning's progressing well, and the, the students are progressing well. Sometimes how that learning is being delivered and is going to be delivered doesn't get recorded so much. So we came up with the skills and knowledge planner on the bottom part of it, where we clearly put in the unit number, the title, the skills the learner had to had to develop to meet the requirements of that unit, okay, how that learning was going to be developed, and more important, who was going to do it, whether it was going to be on the job um, learning, whether it was going to be assessor based learning, and then there was things like self study assignments, exams and things like that. We divided the guiding learners learning hours up into on the job training and off the job training and then we put the top bits in. Right. So that was <coughs> a complete learning plan for the learner, and that could be customized and changed as things change in the learner journey, and dates could be changed and adjusted, and skills and knowledge could be changed as well, okay, as things, as things progressed. Right, the reason we were able to change to the full electronic version was the merger between ISIS training and Lincoln College literally provided the perfect opportunity. We'd already agreed there was too much duplication of data, it was time consuming and frustrating. And at ISIS training, we'd realized that one file was the perfect platform cr for creating ele individual, sorry, electronic ILPs. The bonus of that was Lincoln College were also using one file as their preferred a portfolio. So we were able to bring the expertise from the two companies together to come up with this version that we use. And again, myself who did delivered the e-learning for ISIS training on the people who did that for Lincoln College, both the grades that the ability to train and customize the forms and the link the data was absolutely key to making this work and for it to be successful. Okay. So this is basically how it works. There is an IFP template in one file and that can be customized to meet your needs. You can change anything you want and not the forms, the fields, the data, you can add things into that. 
all the data entered into one file regarding the learner and the progress and the qualification is automatically linked to the ILP, so it updates automatically. There's a range of data forms that can be created to capture any additional information, and that also is automatically linked to the ILP. Okay, and that's in a, a part of the one file administration functions called Form Builder, and it's just a very, very easy process to design and create forms to serve any purpose. So the ILP then becomes an organic document that can constantly change and updated. Okay. When it's changed and updated, what we do, we produce what we call a signable copy, and the learner and the employer will read them changes and they will agree to that by literally clicking an electronic signature. So each version of the ILP and each change is agreed, it's documented, it's audited, and it's saved. The screenshots we're seeing in front of you now, at the top one, that is the data forms we've created to um, input the data into the ILP. And the first one on the left is the delivery plan, skills and knowledge planner. And it says version two on that because the first one didn't quite suit the needs, so we've improved and developed that. Okay. The next one is the delivery plan, which is basically the framework components, which is all the elements of the apprenticeship framework the learner is going to take. Okay. Then there's the initial assessment results, Okay, and then there's forms for prior achievement and general learning information. So all that's done online, nice and easily, automatically saved into one file, automatically updated in the ILP. And just below that, so you can just go back a, a screen, and just below that is literally the blank form as it appears. And as you can see, very simple, you just click add row, put the information in, and you can build that up as much as you want, put as much or as little information as you need until you've captured all the data. Okay. This is the skills and knowledge planner. We just replicated that onto one file, exactly the same, but we, could, we didn't have to put all the fields in because we didn't have to have the guided learning hours in there because that's already recorded elsewhere on one file. We didn't have to put the target dates in there because that's already recorded elsewhere in one file. So basically, this is just the development plan that you agree with the learner and the employer to explain how you're going to go through those units, how you're going to meet the, the needs. Okay. The future, we're really going to continue going down this electronic route, okay, and the aim is to continue to develop a learning a assessment data capture to reduce and eventually eliminate paper. And that's quite a hard task because every time you think you've got rid of a piece of paper or they don't need a piece of paper, someone will come up and give you a very compelling reason why you ought to keep that, and more importantly, why you ought to get an ink signature on that and possibly a date. So it's quite a hard task to get rid of it all. The next stage in our plan is to make expensive use of smartphones with learners using in the OneFile Normal app. That's an app that you can download on a smartphone that allows you to capture assessment in the workplace, and the learner can do that as well. And we also encourage the learner to capture everything themselves and do remote learning and assessment using smartphones and other devices like iPads, and upload that and synchronize that to OneFile when they're done. And the final screen, this is a photograph of the nice new Samsung Note 3 phone that all our assessors are going to be supplied with in the very near future. We've just had a trial and it works very, very well for capturing data. And the screen's large enough to do assessments and take photographs and voice recording and anything else you want to do. And if you just click on the next screen, please. This is some screenshots of the normal application that you get on the smartphone, which really is just a mini version of one file, okay, where you can get all the learning information, you can check criteria, you can set tasks, assessments, and you can do on, on the job assessments in the workplace, and then upload and synchronize that to the main version of one file. Okay, okay thanks very much, Nick. Um, one question kind of comparing it with uh, Clare and Loughborough College's um, solution. Um, who was involved in developing your electronic ILP? Well, at the start of it, um, I did a lot of the work on ISIS in conjunction with the, um, the assessment team, asking them what they thought they needed and how they wanted it, the, basically the look and the feel of it. And again, with people like the admin team who needed that information to put in things like the MIS records. Okay. In Lincoln College, there's various people across the years have developed um, ideas and, and ILPs, and I think it was just a case of getting together and sharing all the, all the information and coming up with the best bits of it 
yeah, and, and then all agreeing that this would be the standard version to use across the um, across the department. Okay, thank you, Mick. Uh, if there's any more questions, please put them into the text chat, and uh, Claire and Mick will uh, answer them as, as as they can. Okay, whilst we're waiting for that, uh, I'd just like to highlight our next in brief session. Uh, remember, remember, it will be the 5th of November, and we don't want to rain on anybody's firework display, but it is about cloud-based tools and how they're used and implemented within the organization. So uh, there will be some interesting conversations there as well. So please feel free to go onto our, our website uh, to look at more de details about that in the near future. Also, the resources for today, including the slides, will be available on our website, uh, the bit.ly address is there, but what we'll do is we will send an email to all people we have on our system to, to show that. So thank you very much for your time. Um, Lynn has a question, which is the implications of staff development when implementing the ILPs. Um, shall, I, shall I just quickly answer that? There is a big implication implication for staff development I would say and it's really really crucial that when you implement it immediately that you get right in there with staff development what we did is we took the approach that we would go across college with sort of gross college in lecture theatre half hour real quick sessions to get everybody up and running to start with but very quickly we found that teams wanted to do particular things or take things in a slightly different way so now my ILP administrator is doing some cross-college CPD and certainly if there's updates like the new disciplinary system that went on but much of his time now is spent in teams so going into teams and working with them particularly on things like the mark book and team and things that will be relevant to them all of those are captured though all of those are captured within our staff development so that we've got a record of who's been to staff development sessions on the ILP over the last two years yeah, and I, and I can agree with that. The training side of it is really important. You've got to make sure your staff are confident using these, and you've got to make sure they know how to use them as well, and also just communicating amongst the staff. They're the ones who are going to be using this out in the workplace with the learners, in my case, and it's got to meet their needs. So if they want the change to be made. I'm quite happy for them to ask, to suggest that, and then I'll come up with templates or designs and things like that. And most importantly, get everyone to agree on the final version, is this is what you want, this meets the needs. And, and I just can't stress that enough that you cannot thrust something on the staff that they don't like and they don't want to use or they would simply not use it. That's very true. I think just to add to that as well, we, uh, we've we done a lot of kind of email briefings that we do with the kind of ILP um, logo at the top. So every so often if there's an update in there or something slightly that's been added, we'll go out with an email to the, the staff and just let them know that's happened. Thank you. And Lynn has a, a follow-up question, which is how hard or easy is it to sell to uh, staff? Not that difficult once you showed them how it was going to reduce the paperwork burden. That was the big selling point. Um, it was a fairly seamless process in my experience, and I would say most of the staff came on board with it and were quite enthusiastic about the whole project right from the start, so we really didn't have an issue with that. Um, I would say for our staff it wasn't hard once they'd seen that it was easy, as you say, to use and it was gave it gave value. I think it, the, the most important thing, it gives value back. It allows them to look and track and record student progress, but also allows other staff to see what's happening. So it becomes much more valuable than just in itself. I think that's really, really important. Okay, thank you very much, Claire. And Mick, uh, if you'd like to show your uh, appreciation for these presentations, thank you very much. And as I say, our next in brief will be on the 5th of November about cloud-based tools. More to come uh, uh, via email. So thank you very much for your time. <laughs>